So today's video is sponsored by Gamdias. They sent me this Chion P3 AIO liquid cooler. We're going to be taking a look at how important really good cooling solution will be when you're having something like a 7800X3D and of course even a 13900K CPU temperatures and how it relates to your PC's performance, especially your GPU. If you're running something powerful from the newest generation like a 4080, 4090, 7900XTX, CPU bottlenecks are more present than ever so that means the hotter that your cpu runs the harder it's going to be to get that performance out of these newer gpus recently i've been playing around especially with the 7800x3d the tdp of this cpu isn't particularly high it's nowhere near the amount that something like a 13900k can reach but it's still not as simple to cool as you would think i learned the hardware doing some mini itx enclosures First, I tried to put a small Noctua LH9 CPU cooler on the 7800X3D. And while it may seem fine at first, as the heat starts to build up, especially in a small enclosure, very quickly, I kind of reach the thermal limit of the CPU. And even during games, like in Starfield, very easily that temperature would ramp up all the way close to the 89C sort of a little cutoff point. Now, you definitely want to have that a lot cooler. So I wanted to see how big of a difference it would be from that small, even high quality Noctua air cooler to something more substantial like this Gamdias Chion P3 AIO. So much bigger and obviously you're going to need a bigger case, but some small form factor cases like the Dan A4, for example, H2O can support at least a 240 millimeter AIO. So you can certainly still fit that AIO in many small enclosures. You don't necessarily need a really big case. As soon as I tried that AIO, the performance difference was really, really quite large. Before, Cinebench, for example, would go to 89C, and basically that's the limit of the 7800X3D, and then my score would be somewhere in like the low 16,000s. A really healthy 7800X3D likes to run closer to 18,000, for example, maybe like high 17,900, something like that, depending on the exact chip that you have. With the Chion P3, right away, performed significantly better. I mean, the, the thermals didn't get anywhere near 89C. The highest was around 82C or so, and the boost clocks stayed much higher. That's going to be the key here, and the CPU was able to reach almost 18,000. It was like 17,900 and change. That's a significant difference. When you're playing a game, the same thing would happen. Like When I had that Noctua LH9 cooler on it, the CPU would easily reach 87, 88 degrees Celsius. With the P3 AIO, temperatures are significantly better. They're generally going to be in the high 60s, low 70s. Once in a while, like when it's sort of a really intense scene or when something is loading and the CPU shoots up in usage, it'll go up to like 77, 78, but it definitely stayed way under 80. And that just means it's going to be less thermal throttling and it's going to be able to pump all that performance with the GPU without having any bottlenecks. So that's why I think even a CPU like this where theoretically you can use an air cooler or a smaller cooler it may be a good idea to step up to something like this like a bigger AIO 240 280 even a 360 millimeter AIO if you can actually fit one is what I would recommend for something like a 13900k maybe even a 13700k which still gets pretty toasty and then for some of the AMD Ryzen CPUs you can definitely drop it down a little bit to like maybe 240 even a 120 um, millimeter AIO, believe it or not, if it's in the case that has good airflow, can actually be decent without thermal throttling in the 7800X3D, but obviously 240 is really what you should aim for if you can fit that in your case. That's just going to be more surface area for you to be able to cool these very hot running CPUs, especially the Intel 13900K. 7800X3D is going to be a little easier to cool than that, but you still want to maintain some pretty steady cooling performance so that way you don't thermal throttle. While air coolers can also be very effective, in my opinion, when you're running these hot chips, especially the Intel ones, maybe the 7800X3D does okay with certain maybe larger air coolers, but you definitely just do a whole lot better with an AIO liquid cooler, and you can just maintain those boost clocks higher without any thermal throttling, and obviously the bigger it is and the more fans you have, it actually reduces noise, so you have a much better gaming experience. If you have a very small, 
uh, you know, AIO or a very small air cooler, you're going to have to run maybe that single fan on a lot higher. But if you have two or three fans going, you're going to be able to run them maybe at a lower RPM, and that's going to keep your temperatures more in check with some better airflow. So that's certainly something to keep in mind. All right, guys, remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.